Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wealthy Lala Show with myself, Lori Larson. Today is episode 214. How awesome is that? So, anyways, you know, today what I want to talk about is a little heavier subject. Uh, but I've been really fascinated with healing myself or finding me underneath all of the stuff that covered it up, you know, uh, sadness and grief and discouragement and anger and frustration and, you know, other people's points of view and opinions and all that kind of stuff. You know, we all pick up on that, right? You know, someone says, oh, winters suck. And the next thing you know, we're saying winters suck. And then, and, and yes, they may be due for some people. Um, but I just wonder, like, how much does that actually create to have those kind of points of view? Like we do, we pick them up on other peop- uh, from other people and don't even realize that we carry them around. And is that actually true for us? Is that actually what we want to create for ourselves in the world? Now, I think I had referred to on last Friday's show, episode 210, I made a comment saying that, you know, for me, this illness could have, was also a path of least resistance to get me where I wanted to go and what I was asking for in this lifetime. Now, that could be very true. And I also noticed that it wasn't just that. It was also the unhappiness and the anger and the resentment and the discouragement and the auto, it's an auto immune, the, the amount that I disliked myself and how angry I was at things. And if you look at some books, like they talk about things with arthritis being, you know, anger when we create that in our body. Now, like this is where I guys, I really got to tell you, you listen to what I say with a grain of salt and listen to what others say with a grain of salt, and always check in what is actually true for you. So, you know, check in whether it's light or heavy, you know, for one person having back pain could be like they say in some of the books, uh, not allowing yourself to have money. Some, you know, another one, it could be lack of support. For another person, it could be that that's their area of their body, that the weakness is in, And it gets you to do self-care and stop. So, you know, each of us, so like even last week when my, gosh, my knees, was it last week already? Seems like a lifetime ago when my knees, my knees were hurting so bad. And I tell you, if I didn't get proof that emotions impact our body, like last week was a classic of that because I literally went from a couple days having a hard time walking to then processing a few things, taking care of a few things, and then all of a sudden I'm like just fine again. So, you know, other than maybe a couple of Advil or something, that was it. Um, So anyways, what I wanted to talk about was trauma, like T-R-A-U-M-A. And I've been reading this one little book and it is called, let me tell you here, I went and, I went and self-administered EMDR. So that's the eye movement and desensitization reprocessing therapy. Uh, Freedom from anxiety, anger, and depression. So it's by Catherine Adler. And I got it on the Kindle. I think it was only like, a do- oh, it was $1.69. <laughs> so anyways, um, I've been really into that because... I did not understand why someone who I feel is as smart as myself has, was not able to handle things, how I would get so intensely emotional upset, how I would overreact, how I would l- allow that to impact my body. Like I felt like a raging two-year-old, a discouraged two-year-old, an unhappy two-year-old, like... And I was like, what is this? Now, the thing is, is that self-help is something that's only become newer. Like when I started doing this stuff almost 20 years ago, it was not something people did. I mean, back then, only 20 years ago, people didn't even talk about going for counseling, you know, without that being like some kind of shameful thing. So you got to keep in mind that as I've chosen for myself, you know, some of it was prolonged. But was that wrong? I don't think so. 
you know, I feel like I'm one of those people that are one of those new, new ventures into this new area of self-help, personal growth, assisting ourselves, learning how to self-regulate, become more resilient for ourselves. And so as I was coming through it and choosing different modalities and different classes and stuff, like some were some had great things in them and some just had a little bit of great things and like it all had different parts to it. But in the meantime, I had family and friends around me thinking I was crazy. So, and when I came from a place of not a lot of self-confidence, that made me wobble a lot. Now, when I look back at the courage that I've had to keep going, to keep just whatever that was that was calling me forward, you know, I've just kept doing that. Um, and one thing is I thought, well, you know, I wasn't a person, you know, who was raped. I wasn't beaten. And, you know, or, or um, you know, I didn't, I wasn't a part of a bombing or a shooting or something like that. Those kind of things that we look at as big traumas. I wasn't, I didn't almost drown or something like that. But I was like, as I started to do some stuff like this, what I started to discover is that I did actually have trauma, but it showed up in a different way. It actually showed up in little ways that were little, little, little daily things, you know, the way someone would look at me, the way someone would kind of dismiss me, the way, um, and then all of that, and then even, I didn't really have bullying, like, like in a massive way, but I remember one time, somehow ending up where me and this other girl were going to fight, like the school set it up, like all the other kids started a rumor that her and I were going to fight. And I remember walking away from it. And just the insecurity that that caused, like all of these things. So I wanted to read you a little bit from this uh, book. And it says, why some people are more vulnerable to trauma. It's not always the case that a trauma traumatic event, one would which most people would assume would be traumatizing, will automatically lead to trauma. Some of us are able to rebound from highly intense and tragic events rel relatively quickly without experiencing any long-term issues. Equally, seemingly minor events, which we would assume would be less upsetting, can sometimes have the most devastating impact on our psychological and emotional health. If we judge a traumatic event to be small, we may dismiss our feelings, judge our behavior, and come to the conclusion that we are overreacting. Now, do I get this big time? That totally was me. So if we decide we are not reacting normally to a traumatic event, we may question whether there is something wrong with us, ding, 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 or worry about an impending nervous breakdown. All of us or all of this can increase our feelings of shame and guilt. We need to move away from judging the event and instead focus on understanding the effect it has on us or the person that is experiencing it. Because she's also talking in, in the thing if you're like working with someone as a client. So are some of us simply more resilient to trauma and are some of us more vulnerable or even predisposed to developing trauma? A number of studies have sought to answer this and have discovered that there are factors that may increase our chances of developing trauma and PS PTSD. So PTSD people is not just for the people that experienced war and things like that, okay? So our current stress level at the time of a traumatic event occurring can have a significant impact. We've probably all experienced periods of stress when we've ended up blowing up over something unimportant. If we are already under a high level of mental stress when an event happens, then our ability to cope may significantly, uh, may be significantly reduced. Okay, and I love this next part. This was like, oh my God. So researchers also found that people with pre-existing trauma are more vulnerable to further secondary trauma, unresolved trauma. Now keep in mind people, trauma is whatever was traumatic for you. It could be losing your cat when you're a kid. It could be the fact that you were picked on as, as, as a little one. It could be, oh gosh, um, 
you know, someone looked at you the wrong way. It could be the fact that you went to a party and everybody ignored you. Like traumas do not have to be the big things that we've always associated them from. Okay. It could be that you're, uh, you needed your parents one day and they weren't able to be there for you because they were in their own problems, you know, so you bought things about yourself. So get back to reading. So unresolved trauma can have a cumulative effect causing the mind to overload. When there is a backlog, the mind's natural ability to process trauma becomes less effective. Moreover, the mind is more likely to interpret a harmless event as traumatic, thus adding to the unresolved trauma. Now, though, I'm sure all of us know people that blow up over is nothing. So you wonder what is behind that, that they're blowing up over nothing. Okay. In their world, it's triggering an aspect of themselves that has not been healed and or as they call in EMDR, processed. Because when you process whatever traumatic event in your world is, what will happen is you will be left with just the memory, but no longer the charge. And you then actually have the ability to be resilient and re like, um, uh, re like support yourself, like reparent yourself. Okay. So I'm almost done reading unresolved childhood trauma can also set the stage for secondary trauma. Adults that have been subjected to trauma in their early years may find that they are less equipped to deal with life's knocks. For these people, small events can trigger major tra trauma symptoms. So these research findings explain how an insignificant event, such as receiving a dis disapproving look, can trigger an intense trauma symptoms. And so, um, and what is cool, this is just kind of a side note about EMDR, and I'm discovering as I'm using it for myself, is you don't actually have to go into every detail about the trauma. You just need to be thinking about it. And as you do the eye movements, the bilateral eye movements, um, it just allows your body to process that at the same time. And then it's just, it's incredible how much is changing things. So if you guys would like to try a session like this with me, like, honestly, it is pretty crazy, incredible. And um, yeah, so anyways, like there's, there's so much more, but that's kind of the, kind of the gist of that. But what I found for myself is reading that just the other day gave me such an incredible gift to be able to understand why I thought I was nuts. I'm like, I wasn't raped. I wasn't beaten. You know, these things that they call traumas. My parents didn't divorce. Um, I didn't lose someone close to me, uh, uh, you know, or... And I'm like, why did I feel so messed up? And like, I couldn't deal with things. It was because the way I experienced life and the way I um, processed it, or actually I should better yet say, did not process it. I did not have ways to self-regulate. I did not have ways to help myself to be able to stand back and look at the bigger picture. And I did not feel safe. So what's really interesting is if we don't feel safe, safe at home, safe at school, safe in a relationship, safe at work, it's going to be a lot more difficult for any of us to try and process these things. And, and then come to a really healthy space of knowing what to choose next. And when we process these things too, they no longer stay stuck in our bodies. They don't, um, yeah, they just don't stay stuck in our bodies. And it's so cool. So like, how seriously freaking amazing is that to be able to have that possibility of change? Now, what I've discovered for me since I've been doing this EMDR is I can take seemingly like I was at a function the other day and my husband went and said something to someone else that I did not want. I didn't even know that I didn't want him to tell people. Okay. Like really normally this would not be a thing. And I just about lost it. Well, I came home, I did some EMDR on it 
And I discovered that there was a place in my world where in the past I had felt dishonored by other people sharing information of mine that all the time, like so often that I didn't like that. I wanted to be asked. I wanted to be honored. You know, hey, is it okay if I share this about you? Is it, you know, is this okay if I share that you're doing this? And um, yeah, and it, it was really cool because I, like, I didn't think I would be able to change the charge on it. And I kept doing the MDR. I did some that particular evening. I woke up the next morning and realized there was more to it. And as I kept looking at it, and I did the EMDR on it, I found a different thread, because sometimes there's more than one threads that we need to just sort of look at and take care of, and then it's gone. Like, I don't care now that these people know that I'm doing what I'm gonna be doing in the future, okay? But on Sunday night, um, it was probably a good thing that other people were around, because my husband may not have survived, you know? <laughs> So people, it's just another example that often, not often, but always, our reaction is our reaction. And you know what? What's beautiful about that is there's information in it. And if we take the time to be sweet to ourselves and look at what it is for us, it is amazing how much things can change. So adoring you as always. Thanks for listening. You guys, big hugs. And take care. And if you want to reach out to me, thewealthylala at gmail.com. Take care. Bye.